Let's hope so. Okay, so next we're going to hear from Christopher Neugebauer, who's going to talk on job security. Okay, hello there everyone. Um, my name's Chris. I'm here to talk to you about job security in Python. Uh, hello. Um, so, reason why I'm here, I run PyCon Australia. That's running first weekend of July down in Hobart in Tasmania. If you want to make the trip, I highly recommend it. Um, so, I've got a question for you. Why is it that people code in Python? Well, a couple of years ago at PyCon Australia, Raymond Hedinger said that the number one reason why big companies took up Python was because Python results in readable code. And if you run import this in your Python interpreter, you get this line that says readability counts. You know, this is in the Python distribution. You type import this, it says readability counts. We have a style guide which is meant so that any man and any Gumby can write readable code in Python. Now, I have a contention for you all. I contend that readability sucks. The first reason why readability sucks is that people can comprehend your code. <laughs> what this means is that any new programmer who joins your team will be able to work on the code you have written. This increases your chance of getting fired. <laughs> the second one, you can maintain your own code. This means you reduce the number of billable hours you can come up with because of all the time you save not writing your own code. And thirdly, your code will be applicable in more places. So you'll be able to save time by reusing your code. Once again, fewer billable hours. This is all bad. So now that I've convinced you that your code should not be readable, you might be asking to yourself, how do you write unmaintainable code? <laughs> So I'm going to give you three ideas on how to write unmaintainable Python code to enhance your job security. Number one is to come up with obvious variable names. And when I say obvious variable names, I mean variable names that are obvious to you. <laughs> and so here's a naming scheme that I come up with. You're more than welcome to rip it off, but you might want to change it a bit so that you know I can't come and do your job. So you have callables, these are superheroes. <laughs> Classes are characters from a musical, strings are famous actors, and numbers are movie characters. So it's perfectly sensible... <laughs> Stop it, I only have two minutes. Okay, so here's another example from a web framework. <laughs> So, the second thing you can do to write unmaintainable code is to meta-program your Python code. David Beasley gave a great talk on, on this. I think it's recorded. You should check it out. So, we have this collection. Uh, it, has a, uh, it has a couple of properties, a getter and a setter. So, you've got get spam, that returns self.spam. Set spam return, um, sets it. Um, so, we have this collection here, and we go set spam, and it breaks, which is fantastic because somebody who tries to use it, there they go help. You know, get spam, set spam, that's all there. So the help works, why doesn't the code work? Well, the reason why is because it derives from that. And get attribute just does a simple translation on all of the attributes so that you can't actually use the methods and properties that are defined in the help. So that's what the API actually looks like. <laughs> So the third one, and this one is great, it's monkey patching. Because Python has a batteries included standard library, and that is another reason why people use Python. So what you want to do is you want to roll your own standard library and drop it into the rest of the code that everyone else in your team has written. So who here knows maths? Richard, you know maths. Okay, so what's the cosine of zero? Zero, right? Yeah, zero. It's one. Yeah, it's one. So, um, it's, no, it's, it's zero. It's absolutely zero. Um, because I've actually imported magic before I imported math, and importing magic does that. <laughs> It's not actually the end. This talk, this talk was a bit of a joke, but I have seen examples of this just less contrived in production. So uh, don't do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, and PyCon Australia. We're done. Our call for papers closes on the 5th of April, so get a talk in. Thanks. Thanks very much, Christopher Neugebauer. So, <clears throat> uh,